Hello and welcome to the National Timely Action Hour. This is the show where we talk about everything from comic books to Star Wars and everything in between. I hope you are all doing very well today. I am. My name is Aiden, if you're new, and welcome. Today we are doing a uh, recap and review of Crisis on Infinite Earths by Marv Wolfman, George Perez, Jerry Ordway, and uh, Mike DiCarlo. So, this is a wrap-up of a series of videos I did over the last several months. At the time of recording, it is nearing the end of July 2022, and I started this series in March of 2022. So it's been going on for quite a while. I've done a few videos in between episodes of this, but um, yeah, I've been mainly focusing on Crisis. And uh, after this video goes up, I'll take a break for a little bit, and then um, I will be doing a similar review for Marvel Comics' Secret Wars. So, Crisis on Infinite Earths began as a way for DC Comics to uh, streamline their comic book uh, superhero universe, which began all the way back in the spring of 1938, with the introduction of Superman when they published Action Comics number one by Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster. And uh, this idea came, um, this idea of a crisis came as by the early 80s they had been receiving several letters uh, from fans asking about how the multiverse works, uh, which stories take place on which Earths because there were an infinite number of Earths. So the main DC Universe took place on Earth 1 and uh, the stuff from the 30s and 40s was Earth 2 and then stuff w you know would vary between multiverses like for example there's uh, Earth 3 where Superman is evil and Lex Luthor is the hero instead and uh, stuff like that. Earth 10 where the Nazis won World War 2 or whatever and other stuff like that. And uh, by 1981, they had announced that they're going to make a story that made sense. And then by 1985, it hit the shelves. And by 86, it had wrapped up. And uh, it changed the DC Universe forever, ending the Bronze Age of comics and ushering in the Iron Age, which lasted until 2011. And at the time of recording, we're currently in the Modern Age. Or the... Uh, postmodern age, as some people have called it, but um, basically what happens is in this story we see this character named the Monitor, who is this person who can observe the multiverse from outside of time and space, and his daughter Lila, and uh, they want to stop this guy named the Anti Monitor, who is the technical brother of the Monitor, from destroying the multiverse and creating an anti-matter multiverse that he controls. And so they call on various different heroes and villains throughout the multiverse to help defend their Earths. And that's basically the story in a nutshell, but it's got so much more nuance and intrigue that you really have to go back and watch my videos. I'm not just saying that to get more views, but you know, in those videos, I break down each individual issue from issue number one to issue number 12, because this was a 12-part maxi-series. This was a very long-ass story. I found it overwhelming and unnecessary, and I didn't really want to read it, but I'm so glad I finally did. And, uh, yeah, this is just one of those things that you really need to read to appreciate the full history of the superhero genre. In comic book media, in the comic book medium, because before Superman, you know, they comic books were just reprints of newspaper comic strips, from you know, like the New York Times or Chicago Tribune or whichever newspapers you wanted to get it from, you know, and then they had Tintin, which is is a Belgian uh, comic from that started in the late 1920s and ended in the 60s, I believe. I could be wrong, don't quote me on that. But, um, you know, I've read a few issues of Tintin and I loved it. And, uh, you know, there were other comics before, like Popeye, and uh, there were pulp books like The Shadow and uh, Tarzan. But um, 
it really started with Superman, and then from there, you know, in the 50s, they decided to make things more uh, streamlined and scientific rather than supernatural in the 30s and 40s. So 50s and 60s was more space age stuff. We get Barry Allen and Hal Jordan replacing Jay Garrick and Alan Scott. And we learned that those guys lived on Earth 2. Barry and Hal lived on Earth 1. It was a whole mess. And, you know, even though I love the pre-crisis era, I have a deep reverence and respect for it. And I've read a lot of the stories thanks to omnibuses and finding some of those old issues, uh, single issues at conventions or at my comic book store in my local town. But, um, not that much, but, you know, they are really fun stories, but then I grew up in the post-crisis era where things got a lot more dark and uh, serious and gritty and more mature. A lot of the stories weren't, but that's what they like to say. But uh, yeah, Marvel and DC at this time were getting very close in sales. Marvel was actually surpassing DC in the sales, and then later in the early 90s when some of the guys, artists from Marvel quit to uh, found Image Comics, that kicked DC down to third place and they're like, what the fuck? We're DC Comics, we own Superman and Batman, damn it. We should be number one. And listen, I love do both Marvel and DC equally. I love all of their characters, well, most of their characters. And I like a few Image characters, so, you know, I don't have any qualms with either any of these companies, but, you know, I'm just talking about from the DC perspective. They're like, what the heck's going on here? But, uh, yeah, so the uh, Jeanette Kahn, the president and uh, main lady running DC Comics, she was a fan from when she was a kid in the 40s, and she's like, all right. And by the mid-70s, she became the boss, and so she's like, Perez, Wolfman, just give me a story that can sell and make this shit make sense. And this was also the end of an era for Julia Schwartz, who was also an editor on Superman, Batman, Flash, Green Ar Arrow, Green Lantern. He ran a lot of comics. He ran a lot of the books and edited them. And after this, he was like, all right, I'm done. I've been doing this for like too long, man. And so this was really an end of an era for both comic books and the comic book industry because it changed the way that stories were told and marketed and uh, printed and sold the whole nine yards and um, I just think that it's a very interesting story that's very well written and the art in this is phenomenal I mean look at this we got Captain Marvel and his arch nemesis Dr. Savannah on here we got Wonder Woman we got all sorts of cool and fun characters, all sorts of cool and fun characters, and this is just a very cool story, in my opinion. Let me know your thoughts about this in the comments section below, and uh, that will help out with the algorithm. You can get more people to see my videos, and uh, if you are new and want to check out more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button, and if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and uh, show me your support, or if you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. That's, you know, engagement, so it doesn't matter to me. I'm just doing this for fun, and I hope you're having fun. Also, I will leave a link to all of my social media accounts in the description of this video, as well as my podcast, and I will also leave links to my Patreon page and uh, my merch store so if you'd like to support the channel financially that would be greatly appreciated you can get shirts and uh, coffee mugs with my channel logo on it and on patreon you can get early access to videos and episodes in my podcast and uh, you can get access to my original writing projects and uh, you can vote on polls and um, send me a message just get general updates about this and uh, you know, there will be Patreon-exclusive posts as well, just doing random shit. You know, anything that you guys might find interesting, behind-the-scenes pictures and all that. So thank you so much for watching this video. I sincerely hope that you have a wonderful day, and um, you guys are great. I really appreciate you watching this, so uh, thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye.